promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome to another quick shot review for Cheap Shot Entertainment. You may also be listening to us on a podcasting channel for Talk is Cheap as well. Yes, lots of different things. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And as a massive fan of the franchise, the cartoon, the toys and everything else. I have a flight suit. I have the original Stay Puft Marshmallow Man on my shelf from 1984. As toys, the all three Lego cars. Uh, Never got the firehouse (laughs) because I've got nowhere to put it. So you could say I'm a bit of a fan. This latest film is obviously the sequel to the 2021 film Ghostbusters um what's it was it called now <laughs> Afterlife that's the one Ghostbusters Afterlife and a lot of people are very torn about this movie you know as a fan of Ghostbusters going to this movie was actually fantastic i felt like i was skipping school i went to an early showing booked some time off work even saw a fan wearing a full ghostbusters costume flight suit proton pack with lights and he had his little kid with him he had a had a flight suit and a proton pack with lights and it was just really cool and you know and and you got a little pin badge and i got the ecto-1 pin badge which was awesome because that's the one i wanted when i found out they were giving away pin badges and the whole it was just a bit epic you know just going to the cinema which is fantastic i love that there's a lot to love about this film directed by Gil Gil Keenan Uh, unfortunately Jason Reitman was not in the director's seat for this one taking over taking over from his from his uh, recently deceased father Um, so there was some changes and we did see the original Ghostbusters uh, Ray Stant, Raymond Stantz, Dr. Stantz got more screen time. You've still got Winston, Winston Zedmore in there, um, doing his thing. Uh, he's like a, a billionaire philanthropist. Th- 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 philanthropist, that's the word. <laughs> um, who is secretly making this massive Ghostbusters trap? And there is a lot, like I say, there's a lot to love about this film, but ultimately it does come down to it being a bit of a Marvel film. Like the the main star is Paul Rudd, played (laughs) Ant-Man. I mean, come on. Um, There's a character in there called the Fire Master or something like that, and he is the, the key to defeating the evil being i think it's called it's called baraka or something like that um and there isn't much ghost busting in this film directed by gil keenan if i'm honest it is a little bit boring uh i mean it's like i go to a film called ghostbusters i want to see ghosts being busted there's a lot of questions left unanswered but i suppose they could save that for a sequel but should i have to go to the cinema again and watch how that pans out no not really the one thing i will say about this film is the runtime is decent at 90 minutes and they did try and pack a lot of story in there which did keep it flowing um but in terms of ghost busting it is boring there was a lot of things here that keeps 
Me Happy, a lot of nods. Um, Dr. Venkman was back. He did his usual thing where he uh, does a psychic, uh, does some psychic questioning and, and things like that. Um, so even Bill Murray was back for this one. And he just does it. You can tell he just does it for a payday. He just sort of flops around for a little bit and then, um, you know, takes his money and runs. And that's ultimately where the, uh, the, the original Ghostbusters are in this film. Um, it gets to the crescendo at the end and it's not great. <laughs> There's not, it's not very long. Um, for, for them to defeat this evil being that's supposed to be um, the conqueror of worlds and, and things like that because a lot of the time they're trying to shoehorn things in to make people happy like Slimer. Slimer always has to be there. Why? Um, you know, the uh, Finn Wolfhard's character um, tries to catch Slimer who happens to be in his attic and um you know he's having this um thing with slimer and then you've got paul rudd's character who just quotes the ghostbuster song um and yeah i say there is a, i i laughed out loud a couple of times i've got to say and i do like mechanic mckenna grace as um phoebe spengler she does look like a spengler when you think of harold ramus you could see mckenna grace being his granddaughter uh, and i think she once she gets you know when she gets a bit older it's going to be brilliant but i think they need and they started upgrading the packs which is great and i think they're going towards a more um extreme ghostbusters um franchise which is cool because i do like the extreme ghostbusters they were different obviously the extreme ghostbusters were helped by dr spengler who is no longer around to do that so this is where ernie hudson and and race and uh race dance come in dan Aykroyd. i don't see bill murray having a massive part to play in these this franchise but I am interested in seeing what they do with the next one. Incidentally, it also has uh, Carrie Coon as Callie. And it also brings back Annie Potts as well as Janine Milner. And I feel like that is just so they had four original um, people from the film, from the original film, just so they could put a flight suit on and wiggle some wands a little bit and then fall over. Because that is pretty much what happened. <laughs> um, the trailer uh, marketed heavily on this new sort of Ghostbusters coat. This orange coat design appears once in the film. And it's only worn by two of the cast. Uh, I thought they didn't really explore that. Uh, and usually, usually in a film like this, you, you go after the, the main antagonist you, you perhaps come up short and then you re-evaluate and you and you defeat them at the end there was none of that here <laughs> in fact the ghostbusters didn't even defeat the main bad guy it was uh it was the fire chief guy um who was really funny actually um and he was played by kamali Nanje nanjiani and there's also a, um, a cameo from Patton Oswald and William Atherton as Walter Peck as well. Like I say, a lot of things to keep people happy in this film. Uh, and like I say, they return to New York as well. The other thing about the setting, New York is very heavily populated. Didn't feel like there was anyone in this city. Um, the more I think about it, as much as I did enjoy this film, I mean, there is a massive butt, like a King Kong-sized butt here. Um, as much as I enjoyed this film, I don't think it was as good as Afterlife. I heard a lot of pe I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, it's better than Afterlife. 
I don't think it was. <laughs> I genuinely don't think it was. Um, I have a real love of the original, um, f- the original film and the sequel. I love Ghostbusters too. I think it gets too much flack. It is what it is. The studio stepped in. They made it more like the cartoon. They even shaved Winston's moustache off. Um, and and brought in Slimer as a lovable character. And that, that's the way it kind of is. And to keep people happy now, because the fans now have uh, a say, and it's not just the movie studios. They, in, in fact, Sony even created Ghost Corps for the express purpose of making Ghostbusters films um, and video games, because it's heavily marketed on the video game as well. Um, I just feel like this could have been so much more. I just there's just something niggling, and it was niggling when I was when I was watching it as well. Like I say, as much as I enjoyed it, there are subplots that could have been that could have disappeared. Didn't need them at all. Um, and like I say. The Ghostbusters didn't even really defeat the bad guy in the end. It was the Firemaster. Um, but it is worth giving your time to. I think if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, then there's plenty, plenty to love here. And like I say, most most cinemas are doing their best to... to um, promote this but it's afterlife i would buy on blu-ray and this not so much but i'm starting to wonder what decade i'm actually in i've booked in for the first omen um obviously the first film for the omen came out in 1979 uh, and this is supposed to be a prequel to that. So that would be interesting to see if they use mobile phones in, in uh, the 1970s. Um, and there's a lot of this. That, you know, there was the Exorcist movie that came out at the end of last year. There was... There's a new Alien film coming out. A new Ghostbusters film. You know, what the heck is going off? <laughs> I mean, come on. I love the fact that they're moving away from or trying to get away from the original while casting um, people within the same universe. And I think that was the issue with the 2016 movie rather than it being a bad movie. I think the issue was that they didn't really know what they were doing with it. They didn't really know what they wanted to do with it or which timeline they were going to be in or anything like that. But this does, this knows. So I feel like it could be something really spectacular, but it hasn't quite got there yet. And this is, you know, a bit longer than a normal quick shot review because I have so much love for Ghostbusters and and the franchise and everything that comes along with it. But you have to wonder, should they just leave it alone? Um, even make it a you know a, a series, a TV series, a Ghost of the Week type thing, rather than ghost like a Ghostbusters film. And they're trying to recapture that, um, that brilliance of the first one, but as they get more complicated, as the Ghostbusters get more money, it takes away from what the original, why the original was actually fun because it was haphazard. It was a proton accelerator built in Egon Spengler's basement. You know, it, it, they, they, they had the, know, the knowledge and the know-how, but it wasn't built safely. That's why the containment unit explodes. And, and um, this one just, it doesn't, doesn't have any of its original ideas. All the stuff here has basically already been done. Um, and like I say, I really like the idea of passing the torch. I like the idea of having some younger Ghostbusters, um, to, to appeal to those younger fans and to keep the franchise alive, which is 
exactly what I want. That's brilliant. I love that. Um, even some elements of the car with the gunner seat and stuff like that. I remember that from my original Ecto-1 toy that I had. And it had the gunner seat at the top. Even You even get in this film, um, you know, references. You go to the library. Um, you know, obviously Slimer's there and stuff like that. Walter Peck is now the mayor. Um, but it's all been done before. It's it's all been done. Every single under like the 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 secondary antagon antagonist wants to shut down the Ghostbusters. Every single one, <laughs> and this is no different. Um, but yeah, that is that is it. That that those are my thoughts on Ghostbusters. Frozen Empire had a lot of potential. The trailer looked so good. And this is why I primarily avoid trailers. Obviously, if you go to the cinema, you don't really have a choice. But uh, yeah, I was excited about this one. And like I say, I did enjoy it because I'm a Ghostbusters fan. But it didn't cloud my vision. There was a lot to love, but slightly more to not. And that, to me, is disappointing. Let's see where the franchise goes. Where do you think it's going to go from here? Answers on a postcard, please. And thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.